Hello everyone and welcome to this video on integrating Power BI. I'm Tim Weinzapfel and in this video I'm going to show how you can export data from your Power BI report to a CSV file. Now this is part one and this is going to be when you are trying to export less than a thousand records because this is very simple to do. In uh, part two and in a follow-on video I'm going to talk about how you can export more than a thousand records but let's get it let's get started very simple and let me show you how easy it is to do this here we have a very simple power bi report showing flight data for the years 2023 and 2024 across a number of airports and what you'll see in this table visual there are just over 3,000 rows now one thing i find very common is that a lot of users when they're looking at this type of data, they want to export it so they can manipulate the data in Excel. Now, within Power BI, there is a native way to export data. If I just hover over the visual in the top right here, I will see more options. I can click on this and there is an export data feature, which works great. Problem is, it's just that it's hard to find. How many of your users will know that this is there? Plus you've got to click all the, um, you got to click the buttons and then it exports it to, you know, it downloads it. Let's say you want to have it emailed to yourself or you want to have it saved automatically to a SharePoint file. It can all be done. It just requires those extra steps. But with the magic of Power Automate with an embedded button, we can actually simplify this for our users. Let me go ahead and pull in. I've got a simple, I've got a button here that I'll make up here. And there it is. Now, one of the things I'm gonna have several videos that will walk through this is there are several ways to do this and you want to apply a different method depending on how many records you have. Because the simple version that I'm going to show in this example, in this video, is you have a limit of 1,000 records, that's the cap. In my case, I'm showing 3,000 records, but let's say I wanted to look at just an airline, now I'm down to 240 records, and I wanna export this data, I push the button, and all of a sudden now, all of that is being exported, it's gonna be emailed to me, and it's also going to be saved to a SharePoint site. So the email just came in, if I go ahead into my email, there it is, and there is the exported file in a CSV format. I've also got it exported up here to my SharePoint site. Let me refresh that. And there it is. So I've done that several options through just a Power Automate button. So in this example and in this video, I am gonna walk through when you have less than 1000 records because there are just a couple of steps that you need to do that. But again, there is a ceiling cap of 1000 records. In my next video, I'm going to show an approach to getting around that when you have more than rec a thousand records and I'll be using this same exact example, the same data set. So let's jump over to Power Automate uh, and Power BI and I will walk through how quickly this can be done. I've moved over now to Power BI Desktop and we're going to do everything from here, including building out the Power Automate flow. You'll see I've got my table. Now I can go ahead and just start by adding in my Power Automate button over here, which is gonna add the button. It is gonna ask me about um, selecting my environment, uh, adding all of my data, and then setting up the flow, which, and setting up the flow is simply adding in, uh, or I'm sorry, the add data is simply adding in all the fields that you want here. But here's an easy way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Because I want to export all of these fields in this table, because I want it to match, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna just make a duplicate of this table. And there it is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and convert this to my Power Automate button. There, all of my fields now have been added. I can certainly add more or remove them depending on what I want, but quick shortcut to do that. The other thing too, select your environment. You always wanna make sure that you select the environment that you're going to be uh, building out your flow. In this case, I have a, uh, a different environment here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna go up here and let's edit this flow. We're gonna go and create a new one, very simple. And it's already given us the Power BI button clicked trigger, which will kick off the flow. Let's go ahead and do the new step here. Now, this one is great because if you go up here into the built-in under data operation 
And if you don't see it, sometimes you can expand here. But if you go here, there is an option already, create CSV table. All you got to do is click that. It's going to ask you from what you want. Uh, I want the dynamic content. And if I just go down here to the Power BI way down at the bottom, and it is simply the all of the data in tabular form, that's going to export everything to CSV. Now, this is where the 1,000 row cap comes in because if I look over here, all the fields, there is a limit of what Power BI is going to send to Power Automate, and it's the first 1,000 rows. So just keep that in mind. So there I have. Now, let's say I want to send this in. I want to send an email to the user who clicked on it. Let's go ahead and add that. I'll go up to here. Uh, in my case, I'm using Outlook, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to search for the send an email because that's the common step. I am using Outlook and there is the action that I want. If I go up to 2, uh, there will be dynamic content and if you just do the user email, that will be whoever pushed on the flow. Uh, let's give it a subject, exported data. And here is the exported data. I'll just add in a body. And then under advanced options, this is where you have to give the attachment a name. Uh, I'm just going to do exported data.csv. And then the content is simply the output of that previous step. Now, I could certainly... Uh, change the file name to add in different, uh, you know, some dynamic data. Say I want today's date. I want, you know, there's other information that you have, but that can all be added here as well. And that's all there is. And then once I do that, it will send that email to the user with that CSV file. The other thing I wanted to do in my case, I wanted to create a SharePoint file because I wanted to add that. So let's go ahead and add a step there. I'm going to go to SharePoint. Now this does get a little tricky. Um, the what's going to happen is if I'm going to go here to create file, I'll click on that. It's going to ask me for again my site, so I'll go ahead and select the site. It will ask you where, where you want it. You know where the folder path is, so I'll go ahead and select that. And I have a folder here called exported data. And it's going to ask again for the file name. So let's just call this exported data.csv. Make sure you are adding the extension of .csv. And then again, the content, same thing up here. It's that same output. Now, here's the one little thing you got to be aware of when you are using the create file step in SharePoint is that if there is a file that already exists. So if I run this now and I don't, I, I might have used the same file name, but if it doesn't exist and it's the first time I'm running it, it works fine. The problem is when I go to run this again, that file will already be there and it's going to throw an error. It's not going to run because the, the error is there. Now, a quick way around this, which is what I have done as well, is I'll actually add a step. I'll go ahead and run this first, get the file in there just to create one. Uh, there's you know different ways you can do this. You can look to see if the file is there and then if so, delete it. But because I know in this example that I'm gonna, what I'll do is I'll create one in there. Uh, but if you go up here and just add a step before it, and if I go to SharePoint, there is a delete file action, and I would just go ahead and fill in that as well. So let me go ahead and do that. And in my case, what I created before was called test created file. So if I go ahead and click on this, now here's the other thing to be aware of is you, if you run this step now and there's no file that's that's there and you call it tell it to delete, it's gonna throw you another error. So you just gotta be aware of that and then just kinda play with it to account for that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But that is it. Those are the only steps that you need to do. Now you can certainly add other actions with this file. The other thing to be aware of is that it is in a CSV format. If you want in an Excel format, I'll, I'll probably do another video down the road to talk about creating an Excel format, but this is a very simple way to do uh, CSV. 
uh, and then which you can also use in Excel anyways. All right, so the last thing I just need to do, let's go ahead and give this a name. I'll just call this export data button. And then let's go ahead and save it. And we'll go ahead and apply. Make sure you save and apply. And let's jump back to the report. And we'll just resize this. And we'll move it over. And let's go ahead and just quickly change the button text to export data. And that's it. That's all there is to exporting your data from Power BI to CSV. Again, in this example, make sure you are working with less than a thousand records. In my next video, I'm going to move into an approach on how you can do it when you have more than a thousand records. So take a look, uh, look out for that. I should have that out very shortly. And again, if you like this, if it's helpful, please hit that like button. Uh, make sure to subscribe because I'll be continuing to put up more videos on integrating Power BI. So thank you so much for watching.